Dinosaur Park. I'm here um, to meet a few of my friends. In fact, a massive group of paleontologists from all over the country. Um, and I'm going to ask them loads of questions about their jobs so we can see just how fascinating paleological science can be. <laughs> What's your name and what do you do for a job? My name is Anjali Goswami and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist at University College London. I'm Lucy McCobb, I work at the National Museum of Wales and I'm a paleontology curator. I'm David Legg and I look at the relationships of arthropods which are spiders, scorpions, creepy crawly things. My name's Victoria Herridge and I'm a paleontologist who works on dwarf elephants. My name is Liam, Liam Herringshaw and <laughs> I depends on the day of the week. I would call myself a paleontologist most of the time, but I also call myself an ichnologist. I'm Fiona Gill, and um, I'm a chemical paleontologist. So I look at fossil molecules, and I look at the chemistry of different types of fossils. My name is Xiao Yama, and uh, I'm a paleontologist working at the Natural History Museum in London. My name is Susanna Maidment, and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist at Imperial College. So what do you do all day long? So at the minute I mainly work on coprolites, which is uh, fossil poo. I look at fossils, um, like especially fossil teeth from these little elephants, about that big, and I study those fossils. And then, um, when I've done enough measuring of fossils, I uh, work on my computer and analyse them to try and work out what was going on with these elephants. Like, why did they become so small? I study the evolution of animals, and I mainly focus on mammals, which is a group that we're part of. So I look at... I look at um, fossil molecules in, in fossil poo to find out what extinct animals have been eating um, and also what kind of bacteria and other microbes were living in their digestive system. I spend a lot of time in front of a computer unfortunately but I also do quite a lot of field work so next summer I'm going to be spending three months in America just doing field work every day so going out and looking at the rocks um, measuring the rocks and recording them and trying to identify where the, what the fossil layers are. I spend some of my time dissecting um, recently dead arthropods like spiders and horseshoe crabs and then I look at the fossil record so I just spent three weeks in a quarry in Wales sat on a pile of rocks breaking them open and finding really cool new things inside. Most of the fossils I work on are of things called trilobites, so a lot of my time I spend looking at fossil trilobites and um, trying to discover if they're the same trilobites that we've seen before or if they're new trilobites. The oldest trilobite that we know of lived 520 million years ago, so that's almost 300 million years before the dinosaurs even appeared. So really, really old fossils. And so some of it is, uh, is like a rock, um, so dinosaur poo just looks like a rock, really. Um, and then sometimes if I work on poo from, say, um, a mammoth or, um, or a ground sloth, that was, a, that was the first poo that I ever worked on was from a ground sloth, um, then it's not, it's not rock, it's, it's, kind of, um, it's kind of just dried out. So it feels a bit like, uh, like dried out leaves. I'm studying on the, a group of uh, Cambrian fossils. So Cambrian is like her... Um, the earliest period, geological period, about 540 million years ago. So basically I'm studying really, really an ancient animal and my interest is to find out where uh, life, uh, animal life come from, how they evolved at an early stage and how they radiated out as today's wonderful diversity. I'm interested in life in the sea and how life has evolved and changed in the, in the sea and the traces that things leave behind can tell you quite a lot about what creatures were doing. It's joke time! What do you call a fossil that doesn't really want to go to work? I don't well, know. No. Lazy bones! Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of things I've gone extinct that would be really cool to have around, yeah. like a dwarf elephant. But do you guys ever have this? I feel like I, this happens to me all the time, where I find something and I think, <laughs> extinct, which are really scary. Absolutely. Yeah. Like really big crocodiles, Absolutely. or to be honest, most of the dinosaurs. Most of the dinosaurs. Yeah. 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 Or the, this huge um, snake that was What's your favourite part of your job? My favourite part of my job is being able to work with dinosaur bones. My favourite bit was to make discoveries. Being out in the field, I think, that's the best. To go actually out and look at rocks and try and figure out how animals and plants were living and working in the past. Well, I love travelling. I, sometimes I think I mainly got into this job because I get to travel all the time. You know, I was in, yesterday I was in Paris, tomorrow I'm going to Argentina. You know, 
you get to go all over the place looking for fossils and also meeting people, um, presenting your research all over the world. I really like going out and looking for new fossils. So you go out into the field somewhere and um, you sort of bash lots of rocks with your hammer and break them up and then you check all the bits and pieces and see if you find any more trilobites. So that's really fun. When I was nine, I fell in love with a diplodocus. What did you want to be when you were nine? A paleontologist. Really? I did, yes. When I was nine, I wanted to write books, stories. Didn't want to be a scientist at all. Um, when I was nine, uh, I wanted to be an actress. And I had no idea at all that I'd end up working with fossil poo. <laughs> a paleontologist. I wanted to be a paleontologist since I was three years old, according to my mum. If I had to pick one thing when I was nine, I would have said I would be a tiger biologist. And I, I did actually do that for a while. Um, but then I realized more and more when I thought about it, the things that were really interesting to me about tigers and about other mammals and other animals was how they evolved. And I thought if I could do paleontology, then I would be able to look at those animals, but also look at how they were, you know, 10 million years ago or 100 million years ago and kind of tie it in together. When I was a bit older, so when I was a teenager, um, I suddenly started to find science interesting. I sort of, you know, it was, it, it was like when I first heard about the Ice Age, it blew my mind that not that long ago in Europe, including in Britain, including where I grew up in Essex, there were elephants and hippos and lions and hyenas, all these really amazing animals I'd seen on the TV, but they had once upon a time been walking around in the area that was my back garden, and that just completely blew my mind. When I was nine, um, I wanted to be a vet, and because um, I really loved animals and nature. Uh, but then a few years later I discovered fossils um, near where I lived and uh, my teacher told me they were 300 million years old and I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. So since then I decided I wanted to be a, a paleontologist instead of a vet. I think I wanted to be David Attenborough. I started then to think science is actually interesting and because it's like, and then I started to find it interesting, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, I moved away from wanting to write stories to wanting to write about finding out the truth of the past. Can you please fill in the blank? If you like blank, then you will like doing my job. If you like um, David Attenborough documentaries, you would like to do my job. If you like animals, then you will like to do my job because I'm dealing with all different animals. The thing that got me into paleontology is I used to like drawing and I used to just like drawing weird, weird creatures and the weirdest ones are like the insects, the ones that have extra legs coming out of everything. So, so if you like drawing... Well, yeah, so if you like drawing, if you like, if you like drawing, if you like art and things like that, that was what got me into it. If you like discovering the answers to mysteries, then you would like doing my job. If you like digging around in beaches, you will probably like my job. If you like poo, then you like my job. <laughs> it's like too silly. <laughs> what would you say if someone said to you, girls can't do your job? Um, I would say they were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of girls and women um, do paleontology and lots of other scientific jobs. No, in this job there is nothing girls can't do. No, we can go to field work, collect the fossils, we can do the research. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely for, for boys and girls, men and women, both do the job just as well as each other. Different skills bring in different things to the, to the projects. Girls can definitely do this job. I think um, it's, you know, it's for anybody who has an interest in animals and who likes to travel or who likes to kind of think outside of the box. Of course you can. Girls can do any job they want to. Um, when I was growing up, I never thought that I couldn't do any job. I thought that I want to do that. That's really cool. So I just did it. And it never occurred to me not to do it because I was a girl. Because girls can do everything boys can do, I think. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing afternoon we've had at the Crystal Palace Dinosaur Park. Um, my friends came down, we asked some loads of questions from you and from me. I hope some of you have seen that you might want a career in the earth sciences when you're older. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea with them now. See you later, bye!